I'd like to share with you a way of determining if a molecule is polar. Either one of these two criteria must be met. Either there's different terminal atoms around the central atom, or there are lone pairs around the central atom, lone pair electrons. Here's CH2, Cl2. Carbon is the central atom, and there are two hydrogens as terminal atoms, and there are two chlorines as terminal atoms. And each chlorine has their respective three lone pairs. Criteria one is met in this case. Central atom with different terminal atoms. Criteria two is not met because the central atom does not have lone pairs. Let's remind ourselves the central atom is carbon. Yes, there are lone pairs around each chlorine, but this criterion is about the central atom. And one might look at this and say, well, hmm, wouldn't there be a tug of a war of electrons between these two chlorines? And wouldn't they sort of cancel each other out? That would be true if the molecule were planar, completely flat. We have to remind ourselves that this molecule is in a tetrahedral arrangement. These bonds are 109.5 degrees apart. Right here on the piece of paper, they're shown as 90 degrees apart, which is incorrect. One might also ask a question now, well, couldn't this Lewis structure be drawn such as this, with the two chlorines sort of next to one another? Well, it turns out that these two molecules, these two Lewis structures, I should say, are identical. We have to appreciate that there is a tetrahedral electron arrangement around that carbon. So if one were to make the molecular model of this molecule, you would find that these two structures, these two representations, are identical. Let's try another good example. H2O. Oxygen is the central atom and there's two hydrogens behaving as the terminal atoms. And oxygen has its two lone pairs, therefore the second criteria in this case is met. Where the central atom has lone pair electrons. The terminal atoms are both the same. They're both hydrogens. So the first criteria is not met. But again, only one of these criteria need to be met for the molecule to be polar. Here are three molecules I'd like you to try, determine if they are polar. Draw the Lewis structure for each of these and then examine the structure for these two criteria. This is what I come up with. Here are the three Lewis structures. This first one has nitrogen as the central atom with three identical terminal atoms, but there's a lone pair around that central atom. So criteria two is met, so this is a polar molecule. CH4, carbon in the center, and four identical terminal atoms, so this is a nonpolar molecule. And this last one, CH2O, has the Lewis structure below. Carbon double bonded to oxygen and two hydrogens singly bonded to the carbon. No lone pairs around the central atom, but there are different terminal atoms around the central atom. So criteria one is met, so it is polar. Now we'll look at diatomic molecules. There are two atoms in a molecule. If the two atoms are identical, the molecule is not polar. 
if there are two different atoms in the molecule, then it's kind of like a tug of war. There's going to be some polarity there. And looking at diatomic molecules should be very intuitive, because diatomic molecules are linear. Here are two examples. Cl2, chlorine. The Lewis structure for chlorine is simply this. No central atom, really no polarity in this molecule because both chlorines are equally pulling or sharing the electrons. This is a nonpolar molecule. However, if you have something like HCl, where there are two different atoms and they each have different electronegativities, there's going to be different affinities for the electrons. Chlorine has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen, so it's going to be wanting to pull electron density towards it. So this molecule for sure is polar. I'm going to erase this and I'll put two molecules up for you to try. And they are N2 and HF. Pause the video. Well, the blue structure for N2 or nitrogen gas are two nitrogens with a triple bond between them. So this is nonpolar. The next molecule, HF, is definitely polar. You have two different atoms with two different electronegativities, so there's going to be this tug of war for electron density. And the fluorine is going to win because it has a higher electronegativity. Here's the molecular model for CH4. You can see that carbon is in the center and the four hydrogens are terminal and the bond angle between these single bonds is 109.5 so there's four single bonds so this would correspond to tetrahedral molecular geometry or tetrahedral electron density arrangement if that's the case the electron density or these bonds are spread out equally so this is an example of a nonpolar molecule for the reason that the terminal atoms are identical. If we take the molecular model of CH2Cl2, we realize that the molecular geometry or electron density arrangement is identical. In this case we have the two chlorines represented by green spheres and then the two hydrogens are the white ones and carbon is in the center. The representation on a piece of paper allows you to draw what seems to be different variations of a particular mo molecule where the hydrogens or the chlorines can be opposite of one another maybe looks like this or on paper we also saw that well the hydrogens could be next to one another and the chlorines could be next to one another. Well I'm trying to move the molecule around to sort of get that idea where the two chlorines would be next to one another well, maybe that would be the closest it would get as far as what we could try to match up what's on paper. You might say, well, why don't you pull one of these out? Okay, sure, I'll pull this one out and put it where the other one was. And doing that, I just changed the position. But it's identical. And this is because of the tetrahedral electron density configuration and this 109.5 degree angle between all of the bonds. This is it. Therefore, because of the difference in terminal atoms around the central atom, molecule is polar. Even if we were to have one chlorine on here and replace it with one hydrogen, because now the chlorine is still pulling electron density more towards it than these hydrogens are. 
Now we'll look at the molecular model for water. Water as oxygen as a central atom, and the two hydrogens as the terminal atoms. They're in this configuration, in this bent molecular shape, because of the tetrahedral electron density arrangement. Not shown in the model in my hand are the two lone pairs, which one would be here, and the other one would be on the back side. So you have two lone pairs, if you will, just like that, with the two single bonds here. Recall the tetrahedral electron density arrangement and how if I project the water molecule against that, you can see the water molecule, the hydrogens on the water molecule line up with two of the hydrogens on the CH4 molecule. And with, with water, rather than having two atoms being bonded to it in these other positions, imagine that there are two lone pairs in, in this position here. Hence the tetrahedral arrangement of water. So and because of those lone pairs, it creates polarity in the molecule. Another molecule which we looked at was NH3. And this also has a tetrahedral electron density arrangement. And I'm going to bring back the CH4 molecule. And we can see that if I put the CH4 molecule next to or on top of the NH3 molecule, we can see the similarity of the electron density arrangement. The only difference is rather than having a bond coming off the top, so to speak, like CH4, NH3 has a lone pair up here. Then there's the case of the linear molecule. And the two examples we saw were Cl2, which is the model is in my hand. And in this case, identical atoms in a linear electron arrangement. There's an equal tug of war, if you will, so there's no polarity in this molecule. They're sharing electron density equally. The other example we saw was HCl, where this is a linear molecule. In this case, we have two different atoms with different electron activities. So we will have polarity where the chlorine is pulling electron density more than the hydrogen 